Write the complete ionic and net ionic equation from the following balanced molecular equation. So, um, make sure that you have a chart of polyatomic ions nearby so that you can recognize which of these atoms stay together as a unit. Because sometimes when we're trying to write ionic equations, um, it's often uh, tempting to try to break apart every atom. It's often tempting to try to break apart every atom. So we would say, some people would say, I have 2K plus, I have 2C something, 4O2 minus, a BA2 plus, an O2 minus, an H plus, and try to break every single atom apart. And all of them break apart like this. But that's not how we do this. That's not the right way to write um, an ionic equation. The ions do break apart, but we have to uh, keep track of which of those are polyatomic ions and which of them are monoatomic ions. So potassium does come apart, 2K+. plus. This other piece here, these are both nonmetals. Carbon and oxygen are both nonmetals. So that means that this piece sticks together. This is a polyatomic ion. This polyatomic is called uh, oxalate. C2O4, and its charge is 2 minus. Now I know that its charge is 2 minus because if I have two Ks, and each K is worth 1 plus, then these two Ks right here give me 2 plus. So if I have 2 plus from uh, contribution from the potassium, then that means this oxalate must be 2 minus. So now let's move on to this part, barium. Here's my cation, and here, this is a polyatomic ion, OH. Those are both nonmetals, so those stick together. So barium, we can find this on the periodic table, is a 2 plus charge. And hydroxide, remember this subscript comes out in front, so then I have 2 OH, and hydroxide has a minus 1 charge. And I know that because barium is 2 plus, and I have two of these things, so they must be minus 1, because 2 plus, 2 minus. All right, so I broke those apart, but I did not break apart the polyatomic ions, because polyatomic ions stick together. All right, let's break apart the next one, 2KOH. That's going to give us 2K plus and 2OH minus. Because each KOH has one of these and one of these. So if I have 2KOH, then I have two of these and two of these. All right, and finally, we look at this last one. This is a solid. Solids do not break apart. Only aqueous solutions break apart. So anything that says AQ, we're going to break that apart into its constituent ions. But any compound that says solid, we're going to keep that together. BAC2O4 solid. So the next step in uh, writing out the net ionic equation, what we've drawn here is the complete ionic equation. So anything that is dissolved, anything that's ionic and dissolved in the solution has been dissociated in the complete ionic equation. So now to turn the complete ionic equation into the net ionic equation, we have to remove the spectators. So remember, a spectator is something that is the same on both sides. So here I have K plus and K plus. That's the same on both sides. Here I have 2 OH minus and 2 OH minus. That's the same on both sides. So these are all my, pre my spectator ions. So they're all going to be dropped from the equation. And I'm only going to rewrite the species that didn't get canceled out. 
Usually we write the cation first, so I'm going to flip these guys around. Ga2 plus cation plus oxalate makes BaC2O4 solid. So this is the net ionic equation after I've removed the spectator ions. I have the net ionic equation. Complete and balance the following reaction, and then write the complete ionic and net ionic equation. So, if we're just given reactants, how do I know what's going to happen on the other side? Well, in a reaction like this, you have to recognize that each of these um, reactants has two parts. So we have an H, a PO. So a, a cation, the H is uh, positive and the PO4 is negative. And here, Ca, Cl2. So again, we have two components here, the, the positive cation and the negative anion, the chloride. So these two components here, actually I'm going to make the negative component in a different color. So what happens in a reaction like this is that I uh, there's a positive side and a negative side on each of these species. So these positive ones, the red ones, are going to change places. This is called double displacement. And it's also sometimes called metathesis. So let's just write that combination on the other side. Then I'll have Ca and PO4 plus H and Cl. Now I didn't move over any of the subscripts. Um, the subscript H has a 3 on it, and chlorine has a 2 on it. I didn't move the subscripts because those subscripts belong to that compound. If I'm switching partners here, the subscripts are going to change. And we know the way that the subscripts change by uh, writing out what the um, ions are. So H is made of H plus, a plus one charge. Phosphate is PO43 minus. Calcium is Ca2 plus. And chloride is Cl minus. So over here I have calcium 2 plus and PO4 3 minus, H plus and Cl minus. So when these combine, what is the uh, what is the formula going to look like? Well, remember we can do the old switcheroo. Put the three down here, put the two down here. So we can do the old switcheroo and move this 3 down here to be the subscript of calcium and move this 2 down here to be the subscript of phosphate. So if I'm going to have more than one phosphate, 2 in this case, I have to put parentheses out there. And then the 3 is going to go here in front of calcium. So the subscripts change when I change the compounds and they change according to the charges. So let's look at here. I have H plus 1 and Cl minus 1. So when these go together, I just need one of each. So H, Cl. All right. So 
Now I've generated my compounds on the other side. And remember the way that we do that is just by recognizing that each of these compounds consists of two parts and the red ones are going to trade places. So instead of H being with PO4, CA is going to partner up with PO4. And when it does that, how do I know what compound it's going to make? Well, I look at the charges on the CA and the PO4, and they're going to trade places, and they're going to make this compound. And when the H and the H and the CL partner up, how do I know what compound they're going to make? Well, plus one, minus one. I just need one of each to make this compound. So this is the point that we're at now. I'm going to remove these now. These ions are going to come back in a minute. Let's make this a little bit easier to look at. So now we have finished the reaction. Um, at least we've put the compounds down. But we haven't put their, their phase yet. This is an aqueous and this is an aqueous. What's this and what's this? Well, to find out if this is an aqueous, comp, um, aqueous solution or precipitate, and if this is an aqueous solution or precipitate, then we need to look at a solubility table. Um, let's see, let's try to locate calcium or phosphate. Uh, here's calcium. It says sulfides except calcium sulfate. Here's phosphate. So which ions are insoluble? Phosphate is insoluble except unless it's with sodium, potassium, or a group one, other group one metal, or ammonium. So um, phosphate with calcium is insoluble according to our chart. So calcium phosphate is as a precipitate. HCl, this is not even an ion. H is a nonmetal and Cl is a nonmetal. This is technically an acid. So sometimes it acts like H plus and Cl minus, but um, HCl in this case, not being an ion, is soluble. Okay, so since we've determined that calcium phosphate is insoluble, then we'll put solid because that is now a precipitate. And HCl is as a uh, is a solution because it is not an ion. It's a, an acid. Okay, so now we've completed the equation and now we need to balance it. So I have, um, let's take inventory. I have H, P, O, C, A, and C, L. H, P, O, C, A, and C, L. Three H's, one P, four O, one C, A, two C, L's. One H, two B's, eight O's, three C, A's, and one C, L. So let's start with hydrogen. If I've got three on the left, I need three on the right, so I'll put a three here. So that gives me three hydrogen, but it also gives me three chlorine. All right, I've got two phosphorus on the right and one phosphorus on the left, so let's put a two in front of here. That gives me six hydrogen and two phosphorus and, oops, not P, phosphorus. Six, two phosphorus, eight oxygen, one calcium, and two chlorine. So my previous coefficient of three here isn't going to work anymore because now I need six H's. So I have six of these and six CL's. Um, but now I have three calciums over there, so let's put a three over here. That gives me three calciums on this side, and three times two, six chlorines. So that looks like that's balanced. Let's see, I've got six hydrogen, six hydrogen, 
two phosphorus, two phosphorus, eight oxygen, eight oxygen, three calcium, three calcium, six chlorine, six chlorine. All right, so now I have written, I've completed the equation. I've written the states of each of the compounds and we've balanced. We've written the coefficients for the balanced chemical equation. So now the final step is to write a complete ionic and a net ionic equation. So if I have two times three hydrogens, then I have six If I have two times three hydrogens, then I have six H plus, and I have two phosphate, so two PO four three minus three CA, so plus three calcium, and three times two. 6Cl minus. All right, this thing here, calcium phosphate is solid. And remember, I don't break solids apart. So we'll just copy that down here. Calcium phosphate. But my HCl is aqueous, so we will break that apart. 6H plus plus 6Cl minus. Now acids are strange because they have nonmetals H and Cl. This is a covalent compound, but we treat it like an ion here. Um, and that's because uh, HCl is a strong acid. And strong acids, when they go in water, they completely dissociate. And the H actually is uh, partners with H2O, and it makes H3O+. Plus. So H plus and H3O plus are sometimes written interchangeably. But um, H plus HCl is not technically an ionic compound. It's an acid, but it acts like ions because it's a strong acid. OK, so now we've written the complete ionic equation. We've broken apart all of the compounds that are aqueous, and we kept together the compound that is solid. Now we look for spawn. Um, Spectator ions, 6H, 6H, 6Cl minus, 6Cl minus. Remember, the shortcut to find your spectators is to look what is aqueous on the other on the product side of a precipitation reaction. Whatever that aqueous compound is contains your spectator ions. So H and Cl. So to write the net ionic equation, we um, just rewrite what's left. And that ion goes first. So 3Ca2 plus plus 2 phosphate makes CaPO4 2 solid. This is my net ionic equation.